Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch still with me this evening. I'm Mark Dutoy from Oyster Catcher Investments and Zwila Kim Guni from Benguela Global Fund Managers. Um, Mark, there was a question directed specifically towards you asking for your view on South African insurers, short-term insurers, and your pick in the sector. Okay, thank you. So um, I think that largely we see the short-term insurers as being quite full in, in valuation at these levels. I mean, particularly our insurance is, I mean, despite their the superior growth prospects with um, uh, Australia and our, and our island, I mean, the, the share price looks quite full. Um, similarly with Suntum, so, I mean, the, the reason to own Suntum is you think that Suntum is actually going to take out uh, the minorities in that, in that business. Um, but both companies look look fairly full. So I think uh, if I'd have to pick one, I would say on a valuation basis, uh, Suntum looks looks better in the short-term insurance space. So we're lucky. Your thoughts? Because um, I suppose you could go for Old Mutual, um, which of course is within the bigger life insurance company, <laughs> but maybe you just don't want to do that because you don't want to end up not making any money for decades at a time. <laughs> no, Old Mutual is a definite no, no. I mean, they've got no strategy, no execution at the moment. I think they're trying hard, but uh, I don't think it's good enough in this competitive market. Uh, I think I think I'd go with Suntime as well. I think uh, our insurance is an excellent operator. Uh, I do think that uh, the prices run uh, relatively hard. Suntime, uh, well established. Uh, I think it's got some potential. I mean, I think with all these uh, recent claims, we're likely to see. Uh, many of these insurance companies up in their uh, premiums, and that might be something that could open up uh, their margins in the in the coming uh, year or two. So I'll probably say, uh, from a valuation point of view, I'll probably go with Santa. Okay. Can I just ask though, um, uh, and well, both of you, but going back to you, Mark, you said there's a likelihood that Sunlam would buy out Santam. I mean, it's had this high ownership of Santam stock for years, and it's never chosen to take it uh, private. So what makes you think anything would change? Why would they use their capital to do that? Yeah, I mean, I suppose that it's something that we've, that we've kind of kept an eye on or expected for, for quite a while. And I guess you're, that is a fair point. I mean, Suntum would need to get quite cheap um, for Suntum to want to, to allocate their capital there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always an option that's on the table. So I think that you do have some downside protection when you buy Suntum because if it gets too cheap, you know, then uh, Sunlam would probably come, uh, you know, make an offer. So I think it does give you some some downside protection, and it's an option, almost like an option value that you can build into to the Sunlam price. Yeah. So, like, is that how you would view it as well? Yeah. Look, I, I find it difficult to 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 make such a a call, but I I, I definitely think that uh, Sunlam may become a cash flush and 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 maybe consider a buyout of uh, a Suntum or another company they might go buy something else uh, on the African continent. I mean, they're busy with the consolidation of uh, Saham and the, uh, the, the other company. Uh, in essence, I think that they might be able to get some uh, capital uh, release from that uh, once the thing is consolidated. So they might look for opportunities, but there's no guarantee in my mind that uh, they could be looking at Suntum. Okay, then what about um Investec. Uh, and the viewer asks, what is the thinking around further consolidation between Investec and Rathbones beyond the wealth and investment businesses? Uh, as we're lucky staying with you, uh, um, do you have any I, thoughts I'd around this? Say it's po it, it is possible. I mean, I think Investec is surprised on, on the upside, like in a, in a very big way. And I think they're getting to a point where they the maximization of their execution uh, uh, dividend uh, is getting close to, to its peak. Uh, so they've, they've set targets in terms of a uh, number of customers that they will uh, acquire, especially in the UK. And they've also said uh, how, how big the book they, they, they'll build. And despite all the challenges that are happening in the UK, they've been very successful in getting in the executing that strategy. So I think it might be the next leg up to, to basically consolidate. Okay. Um, if, if we can, maybe the control room can pull up a chart of Investec PLC, just uh, because our viewer specifically asked about INP. Um, Mark, w what would it mean if there were further consolidation beyond the wealth and investment businesses for Investec uh, with Rathbones? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess my view is that 
I think that they've done the deal that they that they wanted to do. Um, I mean, they looked at the the investing wealth business, and they wanted to replatform the business, and it was going to be quite expensive. Um, and so, you know, given that is kind of a, a a backdrop, I mean, they were looking to see what kind of other innovative deals there were to be done instead. Um, and the type with Rathbones is actually quite, I think, it's quite a neat deal. Um, they're still going to um, account for Rathbones as an associate in their income statement, so you'll still see the income coming through the income statement. Um, and it gives that business a, a lot more scale in, in the UK, and um, there's also some synergy benefits as well. So I think Investic, I think going forward, I, I expect them to focus more on their operations, um, growing their South African um, private banking business, um, focusing on their high net wealth business in the UK, and then also looking to expand um, following some of their clients into Europe, um, which I believe is also sort of a, a, a newer growth um, aspect that hasn't really been been spoken about before. So I think Investic's done very well to to kind of reposition the business and sim simplify all the, all the structures within it. And I think that their growth prospects are actually looking quite quite good at this point. Um, I mean, they certainly have a very good and a very strong relationship banking franchise in South Africa to build off of. Yeah. Um, and sticking with UK um, uh, companies, uh, a viewer asks for the panel's view on Shaftesbury in light of today's excellent update. Um, so we're like, is this um, a property company that you look at at all? Unfortunately, I haven't looked at it uh, uh, to let Okay, Mark, did you? Yeah. Look at so I mean, I, th I think that they, I mean, the update read uh, very well. And um, I mean, they certainly own uh, fantastic properties in the UK. I mean, I think the one thing that we haven't liked about the business is that they are quite aggressive in the valuations that they place on their properties. Um, and so, I mean, for us, it's always looked, the price has looked a bit full, um, I guess. I think if you if you really believe in their location, you know the West End and um, uh, in London, um, I mean they come and garden. I mean they do really have fantastic locations. So any any bounce or, or um, improvement in the UK macro scenario, I think will be will be good for the share price as well. Um, so I think we'll probably have another look at it. But last time we looked at it, the the valuation of their properties in our minds was just too aggressive. Yeah, and also they had yeah. quite a. Um, a big jump up in their share price this year. So I, I wonder if one's missed the boat somewhat. Um, okay, there's a question on ASML and NVIDIA. And the viewer asks, is it time to take the plunge and put Rand Hedge common sense in their growth and the continued falling uh, Rand uh, versus the dollar? So we're like a ASML and NVIDIA. Uh, do you think, yeah, would you commit your, your offshore funds to this now? Or do you think it's maybe a little bit too late? Maybe the the profit margins for NVIDIA in particular are just too high to justify investing into it now? Because if it gets if you get that wrong and the exchange rate strengthens, then you've got a bit of a double whammy against you, right? Yeah. Look, uh, we, we've got both uh, companies in our portfolios, but uh, uh, at an underweight level, uh, so we don't have the full weight. Uh, particularly, the only uh, frustration we had was the, around the valuations. The valuation ran too hard. Uh, before we could buy our own uh, uh, desired uh, level. But I do think that, I mean, if you look at uh, ASML, their dominance in the, uh, uh, the, the, the chip making uh, equipment is actually something that is almost unassailable, I mean, from, from their, their peers. So, so I do think that uh, they, they have a lead and especially uh, in the uh, newer versions of the of the equipment, so it's likely that uh, they will get the benefit of uh, other semiconductors buying their machines to basically uh, produce more semiconductors as, as the new types of uh, semiconductors come on market. I think uh, Nvidia again another good stock. Uh, uh, I think the, the the execution has been amazing. The, the data center business has surprised on the upside. Again, it's it's also run too hard, and you, you have to believe the numbers uh, going forward to, to be able to buy it at this level. So I'd probably stay at this level. I mean, I'll 
keep my underweight uh, and hope for a slight pullback to, okay. to be able to, to invest in them. But they're both great companies, great growth prospects. Very quickly, Mark, before I get to stock picks, what would you do with your, with your offshore allowance? A, would you convert it now, and B, would you buy those two companies? Yeah, so first off, on NVIDIA, I think that the share price has just run too hard. There's a lot of hype built in to the valuation and trades. You know, it does matter what you pay for your investments. I think that you're paying too much for NVIDIA at this price. Um, ASML is the contract manufacturer of the chips. Um, so a better valuation, but they, I mean, they do have to contract um, uh, for the capacity that they have. I know they have increased capacity, so they probably do have more more earnings uh, growth ahead of them. Um, so I suppose of the two, I would pick ASML. But if I was taking money offshore, my pick would be Microsoft. Um, I mean, just they, I mean, they are global, globally dominant and they've got fantastic AI prospects as well. Okay. Well, which leads me to your stock picks this evening. So very quickly in the last minute and a half. So we're lucky, what, uh, what do you like? I'll go with Cisco. Uh, it's a, a competitor to uh, Bitrest uh, in 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 the f Bitcoin in the in the food uh, supply market to the restaurant uh, industry. So it's trading at relatively attractive valuation after a recovery in their earnings post COVID. So uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go with that. I think I think it's a, a good quality business that what? is very defensive. What's the share code there? Is we lucky? S Y S C O. F Y S C O. No. Fisco. Yes. Not okay. the Cisco, the semiconductor. Yes. I was hearing the Cisco and I thought, <laughs> wow, that's quite a diversification that they've just engaged in. <laughs> um, okay. So Fisco, F Y C um, S C O. Uh, okay. Competitor to Bitcorp. Interesting. Um, Mark, how about you? Yes. So I'm buying Absa Bank tonight. So I know that uh, recently Jason Quinn has left as a group CFO to NetBank. I don't think that materially damages the APSA brand in any way and all the business. I think that the CEO, Ari Rottenbach, is going to continue to execute well. I mean, he's a strong operator. Uh, we saw a good update from Standard Bank today, um, and APSA also has the South African franchise and Africa exposure. I think that they, I mean, they're already on an 8% dividend yield, and I think they'll grow earnings kind of 8% this year, so it gives you about a 16% return and then possibly a bit of a re-rating um, if we see um, South African macro GDP numbers improving next year. Okay, a local and a global share uh, for your portfolios to consider. So we're lucky, Mark, thank you very much for joining us both. A pleasure to have you on the show this evening. Uh, Mark Detoy is from Oyster Catcher Investments. Uh, as we're lucky, Mguni is from Benguela Global Fund Managers. And remember to tune in tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We'll be bringing you the live broadcast of Gauteng's 2023 medium term budget policy statement. Finance MEC Jacob Mambobolo will outline the priorities for the province and how public funds will be used to grow Gauteng's economy and create jobs. Uh, that will be very interesting to watch. So 10 o'clock tomorrow here on Business Day TV. Coming up next, the close. Stay with us.